All right, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we got a whole nother week of uh, Open Source Friday. Uh, this has been like a nice little passion project for myself and uh, some other people at GitHub. And this enjoying talking to open source maintainers uh, about how they got into open source, but also how can we contribute? So I'm just going to jump right in and just introduce my guest, which is uh, Ricky JS, which is uh, <laughs> Ricky, I'm, I put your Twitter handle below as well. Um, but yeah, Ricky uh, Schultz, you know, I should have asked your, uh, how to pronounce your last name. Also, you're muted, by the way, as well. Schulte. Schulte. Yeah. Schulte. Yeah, yeah. What is that? What is that? Um, I guess the origin of that last name. Um, it would be uh, German. In fact, in Germany, it would be pronounced Schulte, I think. But, um, you know, long time settler, colonial American type. Okay. So, yeah. 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 Um, well, welcome but, to uh, yeah. the stream. Welcome to Twitch. Hey. <laughs> looks like Alejandro really is actually uh, Alejandro is already in the chat, giving us a wave. So thanks hey. for showing up, Alejandro, and uh, twenty other people who were sort of rolling in. I'm sure we'll get more people as we start chugging along. Um, but yeah, I guess we can we can jump in. And uh, if anybody's been around and seen the the streams or seen the the vods previously, uh, they know where. Uh, focused on open source and talking about how how, we, how to get into open source and contribute. Um, I'm Brian Douglas, so I'm B Dougie Yo uh, on Twitter, but I'm also B Dougie on GitHub. I'm focused on developer relations at GitHub, so primarily in the open source space. Um, so I talk a lot on maintainers, talk about how they're using the product and how we can improve that um, experience. Uh, but why don't you go ahead and share um, what you do? Ricky, and uh, your background and sort of how you got into, um, I guess, to do an open source. Great. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I've been uh, doing software development off, uh, for about 11 or 12 years now professionally. Um, I got started doing Drupal and PHP and at the, in the beginnings of like when HTML5 first came out and, uh, you know, jQuery and you know, and um, kind of moved into building more and more advanced things and realized that I really wanted to build full-fledged web applications. And at the time, Node.js was the hot thing, uh, JavaScript. Um, uh, I think uh, around that time, uh, Angular had just come out and things like that. So it was really exciting. So I moved into that, and uh, but had always been really passionate about open source. So way back in college, I was very passionate about the concept of open source and even wrote papers on it. And um, wait, um, in, was, in college, how long ago was that? Uh, well, you don't I have to date yourself. In 2008. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. I yeah. graduated, so I graduated 2008. in 2008. Yeah. I graduated the same year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, there's, you know, grad school didn't look very. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't very promising at all. Time. No, not at all. That's yeah. why I got into tech. Um, <laughs> right. Well, eventually got to tech. But uh, I'm curious, though, you, you're, you're, I guess you're, exploration the open source like yeah continue that path and uh, how you sort of got there and what sort of papers you wrote as well oh great yeah so i was actually studying anthropology um and doing an ethnography project about um uh just uh, about how people taught each other to garden and community gardens and stuff and my friend was like hey you should really check out open source because it's just the kind of like economics and 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 people powered paradigms that you like to talk about. And I'm gonna show you how to use Linux to run your own survey server instead of using SurveyMonkey. So I ran Lime Survey. This is my first time running PHP, my first time running Linux. I got a Linode. And yeah, and this is like well before I would get paid to do it. And um, and then we also ran a time bank um, using, oh, what was it? Austin Time Bank's Ruby on Rails application at the time. And my, Buddy, who was a grad student in computer science at the time, showed me around Ruby on Rails, showed me more advanced bash commands and stuff. Again, I'm just in college, you know, an anthro student. And, you know, so then I went and worked for uh, AmeriCorps Vista at, in 2008. I came back to back home to my home city of Cleveland to live with my parents because it's 2008. Um, let's be real. And <laughs> and um, and was working at this nonprofit and had been made the de facto tech person um, and was building out, I think I built this ridiculous case management system 
in access, right? And I was really <laughs> nice. just like, I really need to see what else is out there. So at the time I started teaching myself Drupal. I'd already done some WordPress stuff at the time, started building out more advanced applications, but then yeah, came into doing freelance. Um, and after that AmeriCorps Vista job, and you know, I'd been working in call centers and uh, as a barista, washing dishes, all this stuff while teaching myself open source in my free time um, and teaching myself, uh, you know, at the time I was learning PHP and MySQL and JavaScript, you know, and um, CSS, everything. And then, you know, before I knew it, I was building, you know, nice little websites for businesses and nonprofits, working with my designer friend. We eventually started a worker co-op called Flywheel Tech Collective, and it was really great. Uh, I don't suggest running an agency right off the bat. Uh, working at bigger companies and agencies teaches you a lot and having more senior mentors. Like we did great, but I learned a lot more when I started moving on to working as a consultant with larger companies. Um, and some of those folks, one of those people works at Groupon now. Um, um, another one runs his own uh, screen printing business. Like it's you know, we all moved on to do our own things that we enjoyed. And what I found is I just kept wanting more and more challenges. And so that's why I got into Node.js and then uh, was doing a lot with Angular 1 and then got into React. Okay. Um, when that, when basically when Angular 2 was still an alpha, I was like, you know, this new React thing, it looks real tempting. And I was working for this really cool startup. Um, and we, we built this really cool application in Electron and React and Node uh, and Express. And I was just like, yeah, this is it. I'm just gonna keep building applications like this. And so, uh, you know, um, a couple projects after that, I start getting into GraphQL. Um, and um, I was doing GraphQL on my own, really enjoyed it, but wanted to do uh, a lot more and then started working on really big schemas and projects yeah. to, to really just push the envelope. And I really saw the edges of where, you know, GraphQL was starting to reach some of its limitations. And also I was at a company where um, we just, by pushing the edges of GraphQL at the time, this is about three years ago, we're fast forwarding quite a bit here. <laughs> um, we we started to see some of the limitations. And one of the biggest limitations was something we needed that was called input units. It's a, a polymorphic input spec at, um, for input types in GraphQL. The idea is you can have one, um, one uh, mutation uh, th that can, set, can accept a polymorphic input. Yeah response which um, I, I like yeah so i want to go down the technical route but uh i just want to give a shout we'll out there. yeah we'll get there uh, eventually <laughs> but i, I want to give a shout out to bryce bryce ida bryce ida um who's also oh, Antro hey. anthropology uh major as well um so shout out to them um thanks for popping yeah. the chat so i i wanted to get the technical stuff but i also wanted to introduce you as a maintainer of graphical um and part of the graphical yeah. found foundation um as well so um I'm curious. I think a lot of the listeners are curious, and maybe everybody's everybody's already involved in GraphQL, and that's why they're here. But uh, can you explain GraphQL, what graphical is? Because sometimes it could be hard to see the eye, <laughs> as well. Ah, uh, uh, yes, the difference. Yes. Yeah, and maybe yeah, like go through the, the history of like why do we have this this uh, system uh, for querying yeah, data? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, um, you might even know a better way of describing this than me. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's such a big GraphQL fan, but um, GraphQL is basically just um, a meta query language, right? You have SQL, which is usually pretty specific for databases, but GraphQL is a way of interfacing with data um, in a way that's implementation agnostic, yeah. right? So that you could potentially, you know, be using it to make HTTP queries uh, or you could be using it for WebSocket subscriptions, or you could be uh, using much more advanced implementations for um, that I've seen for machine learning and other things that aren't using HTTP at all. They're, yeah. they're running no HTTP servers. They're directly querying a file system, or they're querying um, an advanced database of some kind. So um, it's it's a very multi-purpose query language, um, and it also 
uh, is really nice for client consumers because then they can describe exactly the data they want to get back and it eases up that uh, client server contract. If you've ever worked at a big company or, or any company that has separate front end and back end teams, um, there's always that push pull of, oh, well, we need another route. We need another argument for this. We need another field for this. But if you instead give front end developers the ability to um, construct queries for exactly the data they want, to alias things, and insert and yeah um it you can just do cool stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and so facebook uh created this in-house um and um they, they it was it really took off and they launched the open graph project or the open graph api i think that was the original implementation of it and um uh, eventually got to the point where they said hey let's open source this which is what Facebook tends to do, as we notice, they really incubate something in-house until they decide to make it open source, and they did. And you, uh, me, and Brian, and other developers at the time were like, "Whoa, this is amazing!" You know, there was a couple other things kind of like it, but nothing quite like this. And yeah. So it you, really took you mentioned off. your uh, your introductory into like React, and then eventually GraphQL. I had a very similar introduction, so I'm sorry to cut you off, but. Um, yeah, sure. I had the same aha moment where I was using Angular 1, Angular 2 came out as a spec and got delayed a couple times. And at that time we had a new project where I had to use React. And uh, that went over very well and very quickly where we were able to ship it in a couple months with me no, hardly any JavaScript experience. Like I had experience, but I didn't know what I was doing. I was a CoffeeScript fan um, at that time. So when it came time to build a similar app using the same data layer, but for a mobile, um, then React came out, uh, sorry, React Native came out uh, a couple years, like maybe a year after the whole Angular 2 stuff. And then uh, at that point, I was trying to figure out ways to query the data for the React Native app. And Relay was like I, something I ignored for so long, which also came out of Facebook. And it was like an easy way for me to interact between that data layer, because I only had two screens on for mobile, and I was just sort of figuring it out at that point. Uh, so I had the aha moment of like, oh, wow. I have this entire existing data layer that I don't want all of it. Like I don't need this entire project, but I need to create two screens for a mobile experience. So let me try React Native. Oh, and also GraphQL. And it's funny that you had mentioned Perfect. your Access experience too. Uh, outside of college, is yeah. <laughs> if you ever use Access, <laughs> like you know, that's nothing but querying data and trying to figure out how to manipulate that. So, yeah, it's a uh, like you seem very experienced to be now at the point where you're maintaining now graphical. Yeah, I was actually uh, kind of, I. if you had told me two years ago I'd be doing this now, I wouldn't have believed you, to be honest, because up until that point, whenever I created open source project, I'd, I'd be lucky to get like 50 downloads a month, you know, on NPM. Um, I remember one time I published a CLI for generating PDFs and then took it down a few months later because I realized how buggy it was. <laughs> like, I was, you know, like most of us, you know, we, we, when we start creating an open source project and publishing it, you know, it's hard to get traction, you know? And, um, I never saw myself as, as eventually being an open source maintainer, but yeah, like, uh, you know, after Facebook had been supporting this for a while, I was at this company and we just saw how some of the core parts of it were starting to falter a bit. You know, you could see that, the, the maintainership wasn't quite as strong as it had been before. And no faults on Facebook, they had a lot on their plate and they were probably starting to realize themselves that it was getting there. And companies were contributing to the GraphQL ecosystem, but not as much to the core ecosystem as it seemed was needed, especially to start advancing new language features. So I just started opening PRs. I saw the input union was happening and I just said, hey, I'm going to go help with this PR. I'm going to create a PR to implement it in graphical. Um, at the time, uh, I was able to reach out to Tim Greiser on GitHub to get started. And actually, my old college buddy showed me Ruby on Rails when I'd already started, just so happened to be involved in that. He's at New Relic, Vince Foley. Uh, he just so happened to be involved in all that as well. So it was just kind of like, oh, like, yeah, this, this sounds like a so good place. So I'm curious that you, you'd mentioned the input yeah. unit thing a couple of times, and you're you started opening up PRs. Like, how did you get up the, like the ability or the skill? How did you know you had enough skill to be able to even do that? 
to be honest, I didn't think I did. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, uh, can you, um, you know, fix this and this PR? Can you open a PR to add this to the graphical? I started looking at the code and I was like, how am I going to figure this out? Um, and luckily I was at a point where I was between jobs and, you know, I just, it was just like, you know what? This is my chance. This is my chance to really get into open source and prove that I'm capable of, of I mean, helping to maintain or at least contribute to open source projects. I contributed to projects in the past, a couple PRs here and there, uh, like all of us, you know, where, you know, you're just trying to help. You want to add the one feature that you had to add for work and the maintainer helps you merge it and it's great. But I wanted some a more committed relationship. And I was like, GraphQL is a language that I want to be involved in. And I don't see other people contributing what I think needs to be there. So let's make it happen. So I, yeah, I started doing that. And I just said, hey, you know, what is AST? <laughs> like, I didn't even know what an abstract syntax tree was. And I was working on, you know, a PR that touches the parser and the lexer and all these different parts of the core GraphQL uh, uh, repository. But then, you know, I started learning about graphical and all the linkages that it had. So at the time, I would have to yarn link about six different repositories together yeah. in order to develop this, to add this new language feature. Um, and so I created these six different PRs, went back to the original GraphQL RFC PR and said, hey, here's how we're implementing it in graphical. Um, and here I made a diagram too, to show how complex these linkages are yeah. and wink, wink, wouldn't it be cool if we made this mono repo and these three repos, one mono repo. Um, and people were impressed and they had me join for the GraphQL working group call. I think that's when I started working with Benji too. And, um, and I just showed how to use input union in, in, in graphical. Right. And I showed here it is working here. It is in the doc Explorer. You can see which input types this input union maps to. Um, but yeah, that took a lot of work. I probably like not to glorify working yourself to death because that's not my normal MO. Uh, but I did push myself real hard to, to learn and dedicate myself to working through certain problems um, and just kind of uh, would just pick problems um, and tackle them one at a time, make sure the tests pass, make sure that this feature works and find different ways to confirm that different things were working across the ecosystem. Um, so yeah, it was really just kind of like feeling around in the dark <laughs> at first, but eventually it felt more and more light. And um, there's still times where I look at parts of even inside of the graphical mono repo where I'm like, whoa, and I have to like reset because it is, it language tooling can be very, um, overwhelming if yeah. you're used to more you know application development oriented tooling it's it's a different way of thinking of things but once you start to understand ast and you learn how the core graphql library can be used the graphql reference implementation it, it becomes less and less intimidating um and uh, yeah yeah so, and the, the other thing that was helpful to learn was lsp language server protocol which we can get into but, yeah, yeah. I'm sure um, there's some yeah. examples in the repo that you can walk us through as well. And um, yeah, yeah I, I think everybody here is probably super interested in like getting that information of how to, how they can contribute. Also, how can they get sort of like the cliff notes of what they need to know for the project? Um, Nerd Super User um, actually just threw in the chat. Um, well, earlier when we were talking about sort of contributing, uh, you just don't know when you're good enough. So you just, and I responded that you just got to do. And he also responded as well. You start into it, yeah. you get into the flow. Uh, and sometimes yeah. it, you just have to try. Uh, and I like the, the fact that you, you mentioned there's a working group call or something like that that you were invited to. Can you talk about that yeah. a little bit? Yeah, it's free for anyone to attend, uh, the GraphQL working group. And um, it's hosted by GraphQL Foundation. Uh, Benji will be there taking notes faithfully. And Lee is usually there. Everyone, uh, Avon and other people who maintain things, but also representatives from different companies that use GraphQL and just interested people, hobbyists, someone that has a new really cool project they want to show people. Um, 
usually the, the focus of the Graphco working group call, and it's a monthly call, um, usually the focus is on advancing the specification. Yeah. Um, and, and adding and making decisions about how the GraphQL language should continue to work. It's a pretty amazing call to just attend and listen to. Um, usually when I attend, it's just to listen because especially with uh, stream and defer, I love streaming implementations of these folks have taken it real far and it's amazing. Or the new scalers, the new remote scalers implementation, amazing stuff. Uh, I need to do my homework on it, to be honest. Uh, so if anyone else feels overwhelmed when they see things coming out of the spec body um, and are on the fence over whether they should attend, I would just say go for it because you'll learn so much if you want to learn how to help advance new features in the GraphQL language or help, um, you know, kind of bolster the existing tooling that's there and join in any of these amazing open source projects. Um, it's a great place to get started. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious, uh, just taking a look at the chat. If anybody has experience in GraphQL, do you use GraphQL? Are you consuming it? Uh, let us know in the chat. Uh, I'd love to get some idea of what the audience here, who's here. I see Sean's here. Sean, thanks for uh, popping in there, giving your your <laughs> your uh, props to Relay, because I know you're a big Relay fan. I think you've convinced me to, uh, to leverage Relay <laughs> a bit more. Um, but Ricky, while we're waiting for the chat to respond, also chat, if you have any questions about GraphQL, Graphical as well, please pop them in there. Uh, you're, we're here uh, for you. This conversation is for you. So if you want to help guide our conversation and what we're talking about, uh, just drop in the chat and we'll figure it out. Uh, but I'm going to transition us to being able to share the screen. Um, so that way we can okay. talk through sort of first look at the, the project, but also uh, how do you find out some of this like uh, information that you had mentioned before? So... Um, yeah, there we go. I'm going to pop over to the share screen. So that way you can see it as well. Excellent. All right. So you should be able to see my screen now. Yeah. And then the chat should be able to okay. see everything as well. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I don't know if I'm seeing this new version of. Oh yeah. So oh, wait, you know what? We did ship a, um, this is still in uh, it's still being beta tested, but we did ship a new UI. Uh, and I wanted to keep this in. Normally, I hide my uh, my GitHub staff bar, but uh, in order to show the new UI, I wanted to actually show this. So hopefully, it's not going to throw you off too much because uh, things are moved to the sidebar a bit. Um, but okay. basically, what I have here is just a GraphQL repo. Uh, I imagine that there are two places that people will probably end up Googling. Um, uh, that's actually the wrong thing. I mistype it all the time. Yeah, <laughs> like still. And I'll, I'll have to double take. Is that graphical or GraphQL? It's, yeah. It, yeah, especially some of these fonts too as well. They can be a little a little crazy, especially in the uh, uh, these UIs. So I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna hide ourselves to the right a little bit. Um, so I basically just have two sites. I'm just looking at the chat too as well. It looks like I've uh, been thinking of migrating APIs to GraphQL as supposed to be better than REST. Uh, we can address that question uh, in a bit. And then started using it for the client side, fumbling my way through it now. All right, we should address that too as well and uh, use it for your own projects, uh, Bryceita. Um, I, I, you know, these switch handles are, they're challenging. Um, and then <laughs> nerds, super user, we need dark theme. We need the, the dark theme, yes. That is true. We need, need that dark theme. We yeah. have it on mobile uh, and in particular for the GitHub uh, uh, UI, we'll have the dark theme. Uh, I, sorry, no promises, oh, but we should. Um, but yeah, right, where do you want to start? Like, we can address these questions, or we can uh, uh, we start with the introduction of the the repo as well, or sure, or yeah. GraphQL. Um, yeah, well, I think I don't think I even finished your first question because I tend to trail on like that. But uh, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh, graph Graph IQL um, uh, is basically. Uh, it's an IDE. And so it's like, it's meant to be the reference. Originally it was the, the uh, very simple, the purpose is just a simple reference IDE implementation for the web. Yep. Um, it's used by many, many different language communities outside the Node community. It's easy for us to feel so insular in Node and TypeScript land um, that we don't realize that there's, you know, there's Python and Java developers and Elixir and Rust. I hope I'm covering everyone. <laughs> um, uh, you'll miss some. Like there's, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, this there's a graph, there's a Jupyter notebook plugin for graphical. There's, you know, there's there's it, it just spans well beyond my even understanding of of programming um, and how it's implemented, right? And that's kind of this really fun, sometimes intimidating thing. But we decided last year on the same call where um, Facebook handed it over to the GraphQL Foundation. Um, the original maintainers, um, uh, Angel Gomez um, and Chio Lee, and who else is there? Um, I think maybe Lee was there, Lee Byron was there as well. Uh, where they said, "Hey, on behalf of Facebook, um, Graphical is is now um, we're giving Graphical to the, the Graphical Foundation and the rest of the language tooling um, and." You know, within a couple of weeks, we were changing all the copyrights and the license. It felt so real. I think it, I don't even think it was. I can't remember what it was before, but it wasn't even MIT before. So it was like uh, it was a the Facebook that. thing. Uh, their special license. Yeah, their fe special Facebook license. Yeah. So so a lot of what we've done since then is just like most of the last year we spent combining these projects into a reference mono repo that made it very easy to um, make changes across the language tooling. I'll, like what I'll, I'll go into more depth about the LSP um, and then the code mirror mode and the graphical implementation itself have all required a lot of modernizing work to get there. Yeah. It's very much like a rehab, like a rehabbing an old building in the sense that at its time, it was a great implementation of React. Like when it was first created, that was the way to build React applications. Yeah. But there was a lot of things like using globals, um, and so you know there just, was a lot of um, yeah. like you, you spent a lot of time. Just I think the last time I heard about this uh, modern like modernizing the graphical uh, repo was like late last year or maybe almost late last year. But um, you spent a lot of time just updating stuff that wasn't touched for a while. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, just updating things, just making sure it worked with the latest uh, version of GraphQL and the latest language features to um, migrating from Browserify to Webpack. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, Alejandra actually has yeah, a more good pretty good question. Yeah. yeah, that is something that we've been trying to work on. And the problem is, and I, that I'm getting to is that so we decided during that call that we're going to add a plugin API. The users just really wanted to build a plugin API. So not only do we have to do all this modernizing work, which we've mostly finished by now. Um, uh, well, actually, well, we haven't totally finished because there's a modernizing of the React implementation, which is a whole um, PR in itself. So to answer that question um, kind of requires a couple things. It requires um, so we, we, we're, we're concurrently working towards 1.0 and 2.0 at the same time. 1. But 1.0 1. hasn't shipped yet. Uh, not, not fully yet. It's a just about to, um, the 1.0 beta, uh, we added, we have a feature freeze on 1.0 and all the new features are going into 2.0, which is where we're doing the rewrite, the redesign and the plugin API. Yeah. So there's a, a pull request that's been open forever. And to answer your question, Alejandro, there's some pinned issues in, in um, there's one that's a, a meta issue um, where uh, it kind of helps you explore. Oh, wait, where'd the meta issue go? Oh, there it is right there. The 2.0 beta meta issue. Okay. So this, and I'm going to be improving this more and adding more to it. But this shows the kind of the big steps we needed to accomplish um, to even start working on the plugin API. And now we're really close. So in fact, I could even check off that that third item there in the work in progress and add more work in progress. So right now um, we are in the middle of implementing the redesign. Um, we've already um, it's all in one PR mostly like a big it's a big giant feature branch called uh, feet slash uh, use context hooks, right? So once we get 1.0 out there, then we're gonna merge that into master. And that is, um, it's uh, it's graphical rewrite for Monaco editor, react context and redesign. 
So if you see the RFC PRs, those are being made against that one. Yeah. 1523. Gotcha. Um, and so a lot of those have been merged because they're just small ones, but eventually the plugin API is going to be an RFC against 1523 until 1523 gets merged. And then we, then we're going to have lots of RFC PRs um, to add different features to the core and start adding plugins. So I already started working on the first plugin a couple of weeks ago, but we decided we'd gotten ahead of ourselves and needed to shore up things with the Monaco implementation. So that has been what I've been mostly working on the last month and a half is um, creating a, a whole Monaco mode. Um, well, I'm not sure what open source is. Open um, source is my project. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, Sean is uh, very familiar with my project because I use OneGraph for that as well. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to have uh, a nice little data layer and uh, graphical embedded in my project. Um, this not year yet, there yet. I'm I'm working for 1.0 yeah. myself too as well. Okay, great. Yeah. So yeah, if you look at the 1523 PR there, um, you could even open a deploy preview of it. Oh, um, sweet. And see, yeah, that it's. We've got, um, that's an older screenshot, but yeah, it we'll get doesn't to the look, yeah. Uh, and I think I need to, yeah. Get the, yeah. And then you'll have to go to slash bundle slash disk. So I'm still figuring that out too. Because <laughs> um, before it would deploy just straight to the root sub package. Oh, wow. Right, like, this is yeah. definitely looks different uh, than the, uh, the screenshots I've seen before. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So these, uh, this is with, this is a rewrite. So a, a lot of the original componentry is there, but we've, we've moved them from function or from class components to functional components. We've created uh, contexts for, um, for managing the state and providing handlers for a lot of the different activities. Um, so, um, so this is going to be to sort of step back a little bit. This is going to be for 1.0. This um, this version I'm this looking at. This is all for 2.0. For 2.0, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. So once we release 1.0 stable, which is really just kind of the the end cap for all of the zero X Y work. Um, um, sorry, I need to move this. Um, so once we get to um, once we release 1.0 stable, which should happen this weekend probably. Um, once once we fix a few more bugs, I just want to have a very nice stable version because we're going to be working on plugins for a long time. Yeah, probably another few months of building out plugins and presets and and shoring up all that work. Um, so um, so as we do that, um, we're going to merge. So after we release 1.0, this will be merged into master. So master will look like a prettier version of this. Uh, we yeah. still have to do the sidebar. We're going to have a VS Code style sidebar. We still got to add the resizer. We have a resizer component. We haven't added it. Um, and we still got to figure out a uh, multi-step or um, multi-session tabs or like a multi-session mode where you could have multiple tabs or you could have multiple instances of graphical with different sessions on the same page, like in an MDX document or something, which by the way, I work at Gatsby. Gatsby has been paying me since January full time to work on this. Nice. Uh, or actually, I'm sorry, February. So as of February or like February 9th is my first time working full time paid on this. And up until then I was working a whole lot like, a lot on uh, projects at Hilton. So that's why things didn't go as fast as quickly as I'd hoped last year. Um, um, in fact, at Hilton, they didn't even have me working on GraphQL, which was disappointing. <laughs> but we used graphical there, huge implementation used by hundreds, if not thousands of developers. Unfortunately, for, for their sake, um, because of COVID, a lot of them have been laid off. So if anyone wants to hire some great TypeScript, React, GraphQL developers just knock on, just find people from Hilton. Um, I can offer recommendations, uh, but um, great people, really smart. But yeah, um, but yeah. So so I got to move into doing this full time, and um, and that's been really great. And part of that, like a lot of the the most needed features um, by Gatsby are also the most needed features by almost everyone else who uses graphical. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, thanks for saying the new UI is dope. Are you talking? Oh, wait, you're talking about the, the, the GitHub. It might be some confusion. Yeah, no, I, I, I was, I'd be like, are you sure? <laughs> no, it'll be great. So Orcha did a really great job of providing a redesign. <laughs> no, you're fine. Uh, uh, Orta did a great job of redesigning, uh, coming up with a new light skin for graphical. Um, it's kind of based on uh, some of the relay semantics and stuff like that. So we're adapting that. We hope to have a dark mode too. Um, so if any designers want to keep building on his sketch files, they totally can. Um, yeah, and for context, this is the older version. Yeah. So it still has yeah. even like the bezeled look too as well from that that, that time. That time, yeah, the good old wet. Is, is that is that web two point I'm losing track anymore. Uh, it's I a two point two point two. <laughs> yeah, web two point two. Yeah, I remember the bezeled look. Yeah. Oh yeah, get that that vertical yeah. gradient I, going. I want to yeah. take a, a quick break and just uh, call out uh, Crazy Max who shows up in the, a lot of these GitHub streams as well. Uh, I assume you're talking to my chair because I think Ricky is actually standing. Uh, my chair is a gaming chair from Amazon. So if you Google or sorry, if you search gaming chair and like pick the first one, that's the one. I have no idea what it's called or the brand. <laughs> I could stand up and look at it, but I'm not sure how much value I get out of that. But yeah, I literally GitHub does give us a uh, um, GitHub is 80 percent remote, like we're 100 percent remote right, right now. Um, but they give us a stipend for your your desk. So I get this cool chair, the desk that you can't see. And uh, this cool green screen as well in the background. If you did not catch that, that is a green screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Excellent. Um, so I I wanted to shift gears. I did pull up the uh, if not a, I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but if you went to slash contribute to any GitHub repo, you can actually um, you can get like good first issues as well as some documentation stuff like that. So. This is built on, uh, it only works for open source repos as well, but it's built on a little bit of motion, machine learning and understanding like what is a good first issue. And that it, there's a oh, blog wow. post about this as well. Um, so I'm curious if any of these things are good first issues. And uh, also are. I'm gonna mention, I do have yeah. an MX keyboard too. I have a machine, uh, sorry, a mechanical keyboard. That's what you hear clicking as I'm typing. Yeah, um, the first one's already been <laughs> resolved. Resolved? Um, yeah. What was? Can so you explain what the? Um, can you explain what this uh, was? We, we just had to reintroduce the the type doc deploy. We'd removed it from the Netlify deploy because it was blocking our PRs and it was just a, a dependency issue that I didn't have time to solve at the time. So we removed it temporarily to get some work through. Yeah. And then I reintroduced it and we wanted to create a separate Netlify job to do it, but the type doc. I don't know what they did, but it's way faster now for mono repos. Yeah. Um, and maybe it was just some configuration tweaks that worked out. So now it takes like 10 seconds. So it wasn't necessary to create a separate Netlify job. Yeah. Um, and it looks like the uh, the only change was adding re-adding this um, action workflow. Yeah. And so adding, you know, breaking out our um, our Netlify job into separate actions would be a cool thing eventually because we've gotten to the, I it's very easy for us to hit the the twelve the fifteen minute timeout ceiling on Netlify now because as you can see the example repos um, we use them to validate on in CI different uh, types of implementations so it allows us to validate that consuming uh, Webpack projects work with uh, graphical and code mirror here or with the Monaco mode yeah. as well. So um, we run those all in Netlify as a way to kind of validate the build and making sure that we don't have any breaking changes to how we're exporting modules, yeah. how, um, we're, um, how our Webpack config for the graphical CDN bundle is, is done. And the graphical CDN bundle, I know some JavaScript developers are probably rolling their eyes at the idea of like, using a script tag to import a library, but 500,000 hits a month on JS Deliver is no joke. So we, yeah. we make that a first class interface, even though JavaScript developers probably don't think of those kinds of interfaces yeah. as being first class. Yeah, a I lot actually of, have a- A lot of a, users um, that use it are people who don't want to mess with JavaScript. <laughs> I do have a script tag 
uh, that I'm using for my, my Baybot. So I, I stream on Twitch as well on my BWO channel. And uh, this Baybot, the way I get my bot to run is actually through a script tag. Uh, and nice. it's, a, it's a project hosted in a GitHub pages. So uh, I think most people are familiar with GitHub pages. Uh, but this is a script tag. And this is how Beyonce shows up on my streams. Uh, I do have some dead code here, so please excuse that. I thought I deleted it, but it's still there. So that doesn't, uh, don't mind that. But this is uh, the work that actually plays the horn and then uh, shows my GIF. Uh, feel free to fork that, star that. Uh, I do want to build a, a, a tutorial around how I built that because I'm a big fan. But you mentioned JS Deliver as well. Um, mm -hmm. It's a way to get a super easy Twitch plugin or Twitch bot. Uh, working is this a, a quick nice. index HTML? So sorry to digress, but that's uh, really cool. Yeah, it's, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun and uh, it was a lot of work. Uh, thanks for uh, Insta Fluff, who's also who's who just finished uh, actually his stream, and then the Coding Garden as well, who does a lot of these examples that I sort of this picked from. But uh, going back yeah. to the uh, examples, uh, I'm curious, how do you keep those in sync? Because uh, you're you're now you're doing 1.0, 2.0. And then I, I even saw like some 3.0 on some other some other milestones. Like, how do you keep these projects, these example folders, in sync with the new versions? Uh, good question. So, um, so CDN always references the latest build from um, I think Unpackage now, but we can do the same with JS Deliver. They both allow you to just point to the latest version, so that yeah. is relatively easy to maintain. With the Webpack one, it's always helpful because if there is an issue, it's because of something we're doing. So um, the graphical webpack um, one has a CRA style config. It doesn't use CRA. We have a new CRA one actually now that a user added uh, for us, but um, but um, it's it's enough of a, it's, it's a, we consider it a good testing config because um, it, it gives us a reference point too to show users how to configure it for Webpack because there's a couple nuances that code mirror um, in code mirror um, GraphQL and stuff. Um, but yeah, we keep them. In, uh, I keep it minimal. I'm going to add an Electron one too oh, nice. to show how to load a schema from a file instead of doing HTTP using our new Monaco mode. Nice. Um, and you mentioned and Monaco showed... mode a couple times. Uh, do you mind? Yes. Like, could we go into that a little bit? Please let's do that. Yeah, that's that's an exciting. So how do uh, I? To go into. How do I? Where where's the first place I look to find this uh, this Monaco mode and where you can start explaining it? So it'd be in packages Monaco GraphQL. Excellent. Yeah. and um, this would be a great time to bust out that diagram too. So before we dive too in, too deeply into Monaco GraphQL, do you have that that diagram I sent? Uh, yes, you did send that, and I did not. Prepare that. Did you put it on the Twitter, um, or was it on the the maybe, doc? I think, uh, let me just see if I can. Um, yeah, because I'm not seeing a link uh, either on Twitter or on. Uh... Oh, I think I just posted it straight to Discord and tagged you. Oh, <laughs> okay. I would do that. Um, no worries. I, I'll open up Discord, but. Uh, feel free to start uh, talking about it, and then I'll I'll pull it up while you're talking. Okay. Yeah, and I'll just drop it in the chat where everyone is too. Oh, perfect. Or, Even better. Yeah, a link here. Actually, yeah. I'll just grab it from the chat because I don't want Discord to start squirt, uh, squawking at me or oh. <laughs> notifications. Oh shoot! I'm not logged into Twitch, so I can watch the chat, but I can't send. <laughs> here, All I'll right, send I... it to you over Zoom. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Hey, this is how uh, this is live production. Yeah, I'm 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 reading the chat just so everyone knows. That I just I I guess I forgot to log in to Twitch. No worries. Yeah, so I got I this diagram them. here, and I'll get our, our okay. heads out of the way too as well. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So this is where we're at now, actually, for the most part. So with the, especially with that rewrite PR. Um, and once that gets merged and mastered, um, um, it, uh, yeah, it's, so basically these purple um, or violet um, uh, 
I, I want to call them nodes. I'll just call them nodes. <laughs> our, our, our third party dependencies. So these might be projects that people are familiar with. There's uh, uh, GraphQL Explorer uh, that Sean has created here um, and, other, and his partner at OneGraph or graphical plugins. Um, is, is something that we'll implement graphical. We got um, the, the playground, graphical playground um, um, implements uh, this ecosystem. Altair is a desktop graphical client. Uh, Insomnia, there's a bunch of others that implement either graphical or others. Uh, uh, GitHub um, documentation explorer would be another purple node on here. Um, and then the blue ones are all uh, inside this mono repo. Oh, I forgot to add a, a thing there. Um, so the blue ones all, um, you know, are representing interdependencies. So the, mo the most important thing to know is this GraphQL language service is an LSP service in the, in the kind of new Microsoft language server protocol um, kind of pattern um, that implements these three packages. So I, I created this special glue package, GraphQL language service to to bring it all together in a way that makes sense to people who are used to doing VS Code and, okay. and LSP style language service development. So that so GraphQL language service is meant to be runtime agnostic. So we currently have it running with Monaco GraphQL. We actually have it running in a web worker. Okay. Um, and then in GraphQL language service server, we have it running. Um, being uh, spawned as sub processes as a language server process off of the uh, VS Code GraphQL extension process. Um, there's a couple other uh, VS Code extensions that use our language server and um, where hopefully um, it would be cool once graphical plugins are, are you know, stable, the plugin API is stable and all that's going, we might adopt VS Code GraphQL eventually uh, from Prisma and uh, Divyan Du Singh to, to bring a full reference implementation under the hood. Because, you know, when people see the graphical mono repo, they usually think, oh, all this has to do with just getting graphical working. But the same tooling can be used to build VS Code extensions. And that's what this, this uh, diagram is meant to explain. Okay. But so Monaco GraphQL is replacing CodeMirror GraphQL in our de facto graphical implementation. This doesn't mean that it's being cast aside. We're definitely going to maintain it for at least a year after graphical um, goes stable with Monaco. So, um, and we're still maintaining it. But the Monaco GraphQL library that I just published for the first time a couple of weeks ago, um, and we're starting to get more versions out, is a, is a web implementation using the Monaco editor library, which is what's used in VS Code um, to render uh, GraphQL um, in a more LSP-centered kind of uh, language ecosystem. Yeah, can you explain that, that a bit, the, the VS Code? You, you referenced the VS Code uh, GraphQL um, system. Yeah. Uh, is that like the is that the north star of what we're trying to accomplish here with graphical or um, how do I how do I bring that up and then how do I um, how do I sort of fit that at in this ecosystem because you had mentioned Prisma perhaps owns it yeah Prisma owns the VS Code GraphQL it's the second most popular GraphQL language extension in VS on VS Code so if you go look for if you search uh, in VS Code. Um, extensions and you just type the word GraphQL, you'll see a different, a few different ones come up. Um, yeah, this one. So this one has a hunt, you know, almost 200,000 installs. Um, it has schema driven completion using GraphQL config. It has all these really powerful features um, that really um, allow users to, to build and extend uh, schemas and to write queries. So it works now, not only before it worked with just um, embedded GraphQL and GQL tags and JavaScript, but now with TypeScript as well. Okay. So, um, so you can do, um, so you can do um, GraphQL language completion for schemas and in query tag, like 
GQL tags or other, I forgot the one that Relay uses. Um, and we have one user who is actually working to get it all working with Reason as well. Um, the issue that we start running into when you deal with embedded languages is parsing. Yeah. So um, you can't just like say, oh, I'm just going to parse any language. He wrote this really great uh, regex implementation um, that was meant to be able to allow people to just add a few regular expressions um, to parse their language for GraphQL tags. And we didn't quite get to that. And eventually the Monaco mode will support all of the same features as well. Um, and it's cool because the same underlying um, functions that are in CodeMirror GraphQL, that are in Monaco GraphQL, and that are in the VS Code language server, are, are the GraphQL um, language server, um, are all using the same underlying language code. Yeah. So you can think of them all as different service interfaces to so the same, so mostly the same business logic. Yeah, Sean's asking um, in the the chat who who's doing the reason ML uh, work. ZTH, yes. ZTH, okay. Yes, yeah, and he was doing a great job of that. We ended up uh, just we realized that we could just enable. We already had an implementation with Babel parser um, okay. for bar parsing the files, and we realized that we could just turn on TypeScript parsing for that. So that was like an easy win for us to enable TypeScript. But we would like to revisit his work um, for parsing using regular expressions. But it's again, the, the VS code extension side of this stuff, I would love to be able to spend more time on, but it's just not my primary uh, responsibility right now. But it's a great yeah. example of something where if someone wants to like dig in on GraphQL and you know over a period of time and help out, that would be a great ecosystem to continue to bolster as well. Yeah, and it looks um, like the... Um... Prisma has his open source as well. So yes. the, the beauty yeah. of open source. So, yes. Yeah, it's great. So yeah, Divi under Singh is the primary maintainer for this. Um, this is one of the, re I tweeted recently just a list of repos that I helped maintain, including this one that could use more maintenance and contributor help. And this is one of them. Uh, Divi Undo loves this repo, but he just, at, at Prisma, they're, their um, priorities have changed a bit. Um, so they still maintain it a bit, but he doesn't get to put nearly as much time as he wants to into it. So he mostly does it in his free time now, which yeah. he doesn't have much of. He's a family guy, but brilliant work he's done here. And we were hoping to eventually bring that into the mono repo as well. So, Excellent. Um, but we have, there's no formal decisions about that. Um, and you know, it could remain this way, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, so um, so Monaco GraphQL is basically a web implementation of that. And uh, I'd like to do a conference talk about this eventually because it's really cool. So the cool thing about Monaco GraphQL and implementing a language service server for, for VS Code or other languages, uh, for other IDEs um, with LSP is that LSP has kind of the same um, architectural pattern across different runtimes and implementations. So whether you're implementing a web IDE or a desktop IDE plugin, it's the same kind of concept where you have a client that spawns processes that process the language for you. So it's a, it's a, um, a it relies on um, parallel processing of data and, um, you know, kind of horizontally scaling your language tooling um, to make it as fast as possible. Yeah. So one of the fun and exciting and challenging parts about developing language tooling is almost every event that you're handling is very rapid fire. Um, it's very, so every little thing you do is um, that blocks further um, language service messages um, can be an issue. So that's why Monaco GraphQL um, adopted this pattern where all the language service uh, processing, like parsing or uh, processing AST or uh, generating completion items or generating a list of diagnostic messages that we call like linting or whatever, that stuff um, is all being done in a web worker and then gets sent over 
you know, through that boundary layer back to the main process and just like, hey, we've already processed this for you. So as we continue to design, build out this Monaco GraphQL service, we're trying to focus as much as possible on that and even to expose interfaces so that when people are developing plugins, they can just say, hey, web worker, uh, parse this and get it back. They don't have to implement a web worker. They don't have to wire any of that up. They just call an API method that just so happens to be invoking the web worker. Um, and so we have a, a lot of the API interface for Monaco GraphQL will be that way. And then we'll expose that to GraphQL, uh, to GraphQL plugins to the plugin API. Yeah. Um, in the plugin API, you'll get, you'll be able to use the Monaco editor instance directly, which is the Monaco editor API. If you look at the, the type doc for it, it's just incredible the kinds of things you can implement. We have a command palette. If you wanted to show the demo, I could. Um, yeah. You could, How do I navigate to that? Is it in the readme? Oh, you had it right there. Well, the, the half finished. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The um, I wonder if I still have that open. The deploy preview. Um, there's a there's a vanilla JS implementation on Netlify too, if you wanted to. Uh, on Netlify, the, oh wait, this is the, sorry, this is not the right one. I had the PR open earlier and I must've backed out of it. Ah, it's okay. Um, Which is see, the, yeah, oh, it's the RFC, RFC PR, right? Yeah, 1523. <laughs> there we go. We'll get there. No, you're a maintainer when you start memorizing some of the important PR numbers. Yes. Uh, uh, also, you know how long those PRs have been open, if you can remember. The, uh... Yeah. it's It's been open. We've been in the midst of this uh, in bundle slash dist. Yeah. We've been in the midst of this rewrite since December, actually. Um and it's been great. We've had six or seven different contributors and yeah, it's been fabulous. So um, yeah, you can start writing a GraphQL query there. Um, so, and so this is the Monaco mode. Yeah. Nice. Um, so this is, the other one is with code mirror. This one is with Monaco. Gotcha. So, um, so you could do all films start with a, uh, yeah, nice. there we go. There we go. I was wondering. It doesn't what... have all the same conven convenience features of Code Mirror GraphQL yet. It's a little rough. Okay, yeah. Um, so do I have to do like but, first? Uh, you don't have to do any argument. You could. Um, it should be completing for that if there are any. I don't think it sees any though. Um, oh yeah. And then there is there's a first. Okay. Well, I can at yeah. least do. It's a, it's like a relay style. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, you could do uh, start typing films. Um, yeah. Okay. And then that expands to, to like ID. You could just do brackets and then ID. Yeah. Oh, just like that. Yeah. Oh. Let's get in the right. Oh, there's a little bug with the completion. It looks like a little bit. Yeah. Well, it seems like we need, we need some other con contributors in this, uh, this project. Yeah. It's all right. We got, we got something. Yeah. So is there like a name or a yeah. title? There we go, title. Yeah. Yeah, so the way it works now is you have to start typing like the first two characters to start getting completion. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing we're gonna tune. Right now we're still, so we've been collaborating with the, the VS Code and Monaco editor team on this. Uh, and this is probably one of the most advanced modes they've had to implement because it's dynamically schema driven, which means you can reload the schema and it can change. Um, some of the other ones, like Monaco JSON, uh, you're from, you're probably familiar with the, the JSON and Monaco implementation. Whenever you're typing out a package JSON or a TS config, yeah, that's when you're, you're seeing that kind of stuff. So yep. same team that developed that stuff are helping, you know, I've been working with, uh, Peng Liu from the VS code team and he's uh, Rebornix on GitHub. He's been super helpful. Um, just. Uh, he jumps in every every couple of weeks to just give the thumbs up on things I'm doing. But at one point, we did pair program on some of these language features. But um, but yeah. So uh, and now, if you right click on the query editor, you can see we have all these really cool. Oh, there's a type. Um, so uh, but if you just right click uh, for the, anywhere to get the context menu, yeah. Okay. Then we get run operation or format document. So. 
Yeah, I think my um, format is good. But yeah. I could run it from here. So that formatter uses Prettier, which is something that's been in demand for a long time in graphical. Yeah. Right now, we just have this kind of a hack of a pretty a prettification of formatting function that's actually just like 10 lines long um, that uh, kind of works like uh, JSON deserialization, JSON stringify a bit, where it just like adds a bunch of stuff that makes it look formatted. But now we have the formatter. And when you implement Monaco GraphQL, you get a method for um, changing the formatting options using the prettier config. So all we would have to do is add um, a, a menu here to change your prettier config options, and you could, and you could switch from tabs to spaces. Yes, it does, Sean. Yes, that's one of the main reasons I implemented it for prettier. Does it keep comments while prettying? Yes, and that's yeah. that's that's yeah one of the main reasons why we added that. Prettier has a GraphQL parser that's done a great a great job of taking care of a lot of these things for us. So instead of you know doing it ourselves we just offloaded it to them yeah sean's a fan so, and yeah so the users will be able to configure tabs or spaces or or other formatting options using the graphql parser and then you know we might add a few of our own options ourselves so um, another cool feature that just comes for free in monica as you can see is uh oh what the heck the mini map uh on the right hand side so you'll notice if you have an error just like in vs code um like if you just uh you could change title to turtle that's one of my favorite ones to do oh uh, common mistype <laughs> yeah there you go so this and is now the, you can see it in the mini map yes um, if you if you scroll up you can see it in there mm. too it, it's better it's easier on larger queries oh where is yeah it? i am uh it shows stuck in, in zoom mode oh yeah <laughs> there we go uh yeah, so you're talking about this kind of small there yeah it's it's bigger when you have like a bigger chunk of it you can yeah. see more, um, but you can you get more of that and then also if you click F one, let me see if I can yeah there we go really break this thing wait what I think you broke it you broke the parser with the semicolon uh, semicolon that's... I gotta fix it all right I'm yeah. glad the QA this for you there it goes okay now we can really see the red. There you yeah. go. Open yeah, up the Monaco issue. GraphQL is still on its first version, so it's pretty new. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and it's it's hard to juggle both that and and the plugin API, which could be developed concurrently. But it's just um, it's just been really difficult to illustrate all of those concepts to people because there's so much foreknowledge, and because every time I create issues to summarize the work that needs to be done things change and I have to delete like 10 or 12 issues or rewrite them all. And so it's been really hard. It's not, a, it's not exactly in a state for good first time issues to be abundant. It's, it, this is more of a, yeah. I, Hey, I want to help re-architect this project. I want to like right now, the call has been open for a couple of months now that we, this is especially, so we just got the Monaco mode working in the rewrite uh, feature branch uh, about a month ago or so so since then it's been open field if anyone wants to submit a plugin uh api proposal they can i have an idea of how i want to do it but if someone else wants to they can um we've mentioned that on some working group calls and on twitter and other places trying to call for that but i don't think uh anyone <laughs> is ready to just be like hey i'm going to create this huge vr to suggest one way we could do plugins yeah, but we'll get there. So um, one other feature I wanted to show in that demo real quick. OK. Uh, is uh, if you hit F1, then you get the command palette. Uh, I don't have oh. F1 on this 65% uh, keyboard. Uh -oh. I, uh, so oh, wait. If you do right click again, well, first okay. of all, you got to delete the semicolon. Yeah. That's just an issue. That's my bad. Uh, I don't have error handling put in for the GraphQL parser yet. Yeah, and my uh, bad on having this uh, fancy mechanical keyboard with my golden <laughs> buttons great. that I can't show. <laughs> my uh, uh, the cable is routed around. A... But yeah, say that again, nice. command palette. There we go. Yeah. So in here, you can type in commands just like in VS Code. And users will be able to um, contribute um, you know, plugins that add different commands and things like that. <laughs> um, so you can just type here like run 
operation. Oh, nice. And you could do that to run the operation. So that's like one of our basic examples. We got a lot more. To oh do. man. Um, could you? Yeah. So, would you be able to reroute this uh, command? Because like F1 is something I'm missing on my keyboard. I'm sure it works if I hit like the function key is something else, but can I do like space bar and, or space bar and my command is it for- It need to be like command space bar. Command space bar, even better. Yeah, yeah, because users need to use a space bar. Yeah, that is know, true. For space bar. <laughs> and, and it's Vim, one of I those use, things. And Vim, my, my mind goes space bar to another command. That's uh, oh, how my right. mind works. And in, when you're outside of insert mode, yeah. Yeah, I know a little Vim. I know enough of him to, to be to exit to make a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I can delete lines and replace stuff. I can use I would say uh, that uh said. if anybody's interested in Vim, I actually mentioned this on my stream, but uh oh Vim Vim Adventures. Excellent game to stream while you're doing Twitch Twitch streams. Oh yeah. So if you wanna actually learn how to exit Vim, there you go. Yay! But we won't spend all our time doing that. Actually, so we're at the top of the hour, and I, I think um, I scheduled like the time to go at least for another 30 minutes. So if you don't have a hard stop, I'd love to talk about the, the language parser too as well, because you alluded to that a couple times, if there's um, to sort of see how the code that, that works. And then if there's any way that people can jump in, I, point, I pointed us to discussions earlier while we were talking, when you were talking about plugins. Uh, I know you just recently got discussions enabled on your, your repo because I think last week there was nothing, no discussions. Mm -hmm. And this week we do have discussions. So I don't know if that's a good place yeah. for people to go to or if you rather stuff be in issues. I think I think what I found out is I, I didn't realize totally what discussions were. So I took every issue that was labeled discussion <laughs> and just started migrating it without realizing the repercussions. So I think discussions I'd like to direct users to if they are trying to solve a problem in graphical and need the best answer, like, yeah. hey, what's the best way to um, implement auth with graphical, Yeah. right? And a bunch of users will chime in with their different ways of doing it. It's all possible. It's always been possible. Um, but the best way to do it is probably something that users can kind of figure out themselves. You know, I think that's it seems like that's what discussions are, are geared towards, yeah. kind of being like, you know, a Quora or a, or a Stack Overflow. Yeah, Overflow. and the, the best part is that you can mark answers. So I do have an example. So yeah. actually, alluding to Sean mentioning open source, uh, this is a project that I built on top of GraphQL, uh, GitHub's GraphQL API. I do have a discussion where I marked as an answer that I can show. So we wanted a uh, beautiful 404 page um, so I didn't, I don't have as many users, uh, and most of the people who contribute are the ones that are doing discussions, but I noticed that I had a 404, a missing 404 page. So I created a nice little cool pizza and, uh, marked this as the answer. So if you want to see what the final version is, it lives here. Um, nice. In this Dropbox okay, link. So you may, that, I didn't even think of that one. That wouldn't, that, that's another good purpose for it. Yeah. You know, and I'm just, okay. Yeah. Zeit, um, Let's see. So Tim, he was on, he was chatting through and they've actually got early access to discussions before most people, including myself. Uh, but they have like nice little cool, like pen links as well, um, which is not enabled. So I'm showing this off right now and everybody's probably gonna be like, oh man, this would be great. But um, they have some extra, extra features enabled, but you can see some of the winners, uh, the most answers, answerers. I'm not sure if that's a proper distinction. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, individuals yeah. ask the most questions. So I think at the moment, open source has to build a reason for people to show up in here. And I think Next has done a good job of like forcing the, not forcing, but putting the questions here for people to get answers. And that way, if I wanna find out why CSS is not respecting my, my RIM and PX stuff uh, in Chrome and Fi Firefox and mobile, whatever this is, uh, I can see that this has an answer. So I wanna stack overflow. That's a great, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a few of those. There's a few common questions that people have, so it'll be great to direct them to something. Whereas this, I'm kind of, it's almost like a, a spec or feature discussion. Yeah. And it's something where I'd expect pe there to be a lot of deliberation and there, yeah. there's not going to be a right answer. There's going to just be an ongoing discussion. Yeah, so and I think the, <laughs> the thought of doing RFCs in this world as well uh, makes a lot of sense as well. So mm -hmm. like maybe RFC 
maybe your how to do uh, plugin architecture um, goes in the discussion. It doesn't have to be marked as an answer, but the fact that that lives here and not in a, and it's actually threaded too, so I can actually write a comment here and it, it's attached mm -hmm. to this thread. Um, so that way I think questions are not lost, but then you're also not getting pinged like 10 times a night with people saying, no, this is the absolute wrong way for you to do it. Please delete this issue. Um, rather it could yeah. just be a discussion. Yeah, that's good because we've actually end up, a lot of these discussions end up happening in our general discord channel, which is, which is great because it, at least it's, it's, it's captured, but it would be good to have more of these discussions and, and GitHub issues. It's, Oftentimes, people will ask about how does this plugin work? How is how will this be solved? And I'll just just post some example of of what it should be. But we need a more formal RFC process going, and that was my goal. Once the Monaco GraphQL mode um, was more stable, but there's still a lot of work to do there. So yeah, and, and, it, and about that, you know, I was gonna say, oh, go uh, like, there's so much I want to ask about this project, but I don't think we have time for all of it. Like even if if someone was able to maybe yourself or someone else was able to write up, um, so I'm I'm sorry I'm being like selfishly saying what I would love out of this project, but even things like this <laughs> uh, and like a, mm -hmm. a, a like the equivalent of a blog post and a discussion explaining the new architecture and how it's going to line up, and then have people yeah. comment like that also can grant itself in this platform here as this, or sorry this feature, um, so that way when um so like me and you connected because I actually. Um, was trying to leverage uh, doing the graphical project to do a contribution. And went through a couple issues, found good first issues, and I was like, ah, oh, this seems right. And then spent my time trying to figure out some old issues from like 2017. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. And, uh, Those are the fun ones. And that's why I just, <laughs> this is where, and actually, I'm not even sure how much of correlation that you've actually connected in our conversation yet. But from that issue, I was able to discover, hey, there's something going on with the graph graphical project. And then I discovered, okay, this foundation absorbed it. There's new stuff happening. There's like a 1.0 and now a 2.0 release. So then I was able to think, oh, okay. So maybe these, these older issues back from 2016 and 2017 are still valid today, but maybe they're actually in limbo as the, uh, the longstanding PRs are, yeah. are open. I've spent so much time going through old issues and there's always just, it always just seems like there's more. I spent entire days going through them and it's just a rabbit hole. And some of these, so show inline field description in Doc Explorer. So um, I think that one's solved, but we're also rewriting the whole Doc Explorer anyways. Yeah. Probably. So it's like, so, it's yeah, one of those things. it's kind of like, and honestly, um, I had someone tweet me uh, that would be a great feature for GitHub or an action where you could block issues dependent on other PRs or other issues. So like this could be like, and this is my thought. And sorry, I'm just like riffing because I have so much connection to GitHub. Um, but oh, this is implemented then. Is it? Uh, did you just see it? Yeah, because they're suggesting that the inline comments look like that, and it, yeah, the inline descriptions. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's that's what we ended up. Yeah. So this is one that should have been closed a while ago. Yeah. I think. Cool. Well, I'm just gonna say uh, I th I'm gonna add a contribution right now on the air. <laughs> users are welcome to do this if anyone wants a, a good first issue it would be to go find an old issue from 2016 or 2017 and just ping me and say i think this is done right, <laughs> right excellent <Rick? laughs> i cannot wait to get that contribution i expect my name i expect my name to be on the board uh for contributing yes. to graphical right oh yeah we thought about generating one of those little those uh grids of yeah of so this is the new bottom. ui Dang. Yeah. So I know okay. all contributors is a popular project that um, a lot of projects use, but the benefit of now the new UI is that this actually gets unearthed from a couple tabs mm. to now be on the actual homepage, which is awesome. Um, we're also, well, I guess we don't have to go into a bunch of product feedback, but uh, our, there, we, are, we are thinking about the way we think of contributors on GitHub. Uh, to be less about green squares and more about did you answer a question in the discussions? Did you mm -hmm. close an issue? Like those are all valid contributions that don't get collected, that get collected in our database, but aren't surface for uh, for our customers. So like these are things that we're thinking through. But this could be less about GitHub and more about graphical. But uh, yeah, so I mean, we have roughly 15 minutes. Anybody has questions that once you have about graphical, perhaps we can dig deeper. 
uh, I'm sure maybe I can start to the prod the the team of getting some discussions open of explaining some of this uh, I get the way the parser works like we can go through it now or we can just get a discussion going of how the parser mm -hmm. works um, Oh yeah, we could. That's a that's yeah. quite a deep discussion, though. Yeah, I mean that would <laughs> but, be uh, it would be fun to to see the process and get like a brain dump, um, mm -hmm. and like we don't have to do the uh, we don't have to all be on a call to basically get that, and like you have time to sort of like think through the process, and hopefully that helps the the maintainers of the project too as well by getting all the information out. I've been trying to do it a lot myself and trying to get some of my dreams and aspirations. I have a similar to yourself prior to graphical. I have a lot of small projects that. Mm -hmm. Don't even get 50 downloads <laughs> on NPM. They get like one or two from me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, which I'm totally fine with. But I do have one project, which is open source, which does get a lot of contributions and a lot of conversation around it. So it's it's fun to have that discussion and sort of like push myself and like sort of grow my program mus programming muscle out in the open. Um, so, yeah, big fan of learning in public. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's great doing that. I, I kind I like doing streams with contributors. That's something I do kind of informally. There's a there's going to be a uh, starting tomorrow. I'm going to be doing a weekly session, like just like office hours session two. Oh, how do we and, find? Yeah. how do we find the uh, those office hours? That's in working group folder. I'm pretty sure it's all up to date. I might need to update it. Um, there's a the readme there. Oh, beautiful. Uh, summarizes the and you have the minutes and everything too as well. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's inspired by the GraphQL WG repo, but we just kind of embedded it inside our mono repo. It's a repo that does everything. <laughs> um, you'll see sometimes in the commit log just a bunch of adding myself to the agenda commits, which is goofy to see. But hey, we're making do. It's, it's hey, those great. are green squares so, uh, at the end of the day. So yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> kidding. Yeah. But really, yeah. Um, oh, yeah so excellent. I need to add the next one to the next month. Um, but yeah, we, we we just in these. Oh, I guess I didn't update with the minutes. Benji has the minutes. <laughs> um, we had uh, a lot of discussion in that one about the plugin API. Uh, Sean was there, um, and um, I think was he. There's a couple people that are that were there that that aren't listed. Um, we have our Google Summer of Code uh, in intern. Oh, nice. Uh, wait, he's not on this one. Uh, Muhammad, I think, was on this call. He just didn't add himself to the agenda. And then Har Harshi has been made um, a um, a intern as well um, through uh, what's it called? Uh, Community Bridge, which is Linux Foundation's like matching program. So we have two interns working on it. They're doing great stuff. I've got a couple PRs to review from them today. Uh, yeah, Markdown. <laughs> uh, I, I should note, uh, at Gatsby, so Gatsby not only belovingly maintains outside of their org space, they have me maintaining graphical, but they also are maintaining the MDX project. Yep. So if, if we have any MDX fans here, I mean, Gatsby isn't the sole reason, but we we um, in-house, yeah, uh, we help maintain the MDX website. We're going to help overhaul the graphql.org website uh, as part of the Google Summer of Docs program in partnership um, with yeah, Funny enough, uh, that the uh, MDX came up in the last uh, two streams, four streams ago with uh, Tim from Next, who I keep referring to. Um, he brought it up as well. So I actually chatted with Chris Biscardi actually for my podcast, which is a whole nother link. Uh, follow me on Twitter when that actually gets published. Oh, great. Um, but yeah, we went, we took a deep dive into, uh, MDX, uh, more in audio form than visually though. Yeah. Chris is great. Yeah. And, uh, I work with, uh, John O'Tanders on my team. Who's one of the maintainers. Nice. At MDX as well. Yeah. So yeah, we've been, we use it a ton at Gatsby, obviously. <laughs> so Gatsby's all about MDX, GraphQL. We're also maintaining um, the GraphQL PHP uh, composer plugins and all, like nice. we're maintaining a lot of things that don't even have our name on it. So that's one thing to note about uh, Gatsby is that um, we're, we're actually kind of creating a team of people who work on, because it's such a specific subset of, of, of Gatsby where we're, I rarely, I've, 
made my first PR to Gatsby like earlier this week. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, Since February, like, you've been working there. Yeah, yeah nice. and and that's on purpose, you know. Yeah, uh, that's on purpose because they want me focused on this. I've there's been multiple times where I'm like, hey, I want to help. I want to help with. Ret- I don't know. Wait, ret- I don't know what's public or not. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't think it's. I don't think it's public if you're going down that that rabbit hole. Uh, so that yeah, rabbit. there's a couple of products that are really cool. My team is working yeah. on, and I'm working on a team with Max Stober from. Uh, Yep. From style components. And then very familiar um, with Max. Yeah. He's a big fan yeah. of, uh, of Max's work. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's me. It's, uh, it's Max and, um, and uh, Brent Jackson from Theme UI or Rebat or uh, Base CSS from back in the day, if you remember. Um, and Lori, who, who maintains the core, like the default Gatsby themes and stuff. Like it's an amazing team working with these people. Oh, and oh my gosh, I almost forgot. Uh, um also uh oh, i'm blanking oh my god john john gold of course yeah so it's like quite a little stuff oh, i didn't realize john there. was uh at gatsby as well yeah 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 we're all all at it there's a few quite a few people there that are just like wow i there's there's people where i i didn't even realize they were on my team i just seen them on twitter i didn't realize they were at gatsby already yeah uh like nat and i'm like oh nat's really cool and then i see like Nat and Slack, and I'm like, wait, oh, yeah. wait, what? Oh, she's- and it, I think it's like a, it is a testament too, as well, to open source and how accessible yeah. people are. Like they're like I like John Gold. I've I've seen him from his Airbnb days, and I've seen some projects that he shipped as well uh, in the open source space, uh, and also the design space as well. Um, but a lot of people are pretty approachable. So like I'm looking at the, oh, the yeah. graphical, the contributor graph as well for graphical. And there are a few people like Lee, he's a familiar face. Like he's super approachable. If you meet him at a conference or see him mm-hmm. walking down the street, hopefully in a couple months in SF, if we do open up and stuff like that. Uh, and then I see yeah. your face here. And like one of the first things I did was <laughs> at, at, at mention you uh, <laughs> asking questions, whether my, actually, I wonder if I can even find the issue that the issue in question that got me down this rabbit hole. Um, I wonder, actually, so I'm going to have to open up the sauce too as well, because I do have it linked into, uh, this is my project. Uh, and this is, um, I was not trying to promote my project, but I've actually brought it up a couple times, but I do link it here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So the pro the issues. Oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So the issues okay. that I, I attach myself to for contributions, that's what open source is. Uh, and that's the project I'm working on. Yeah. And I wonder if there is a comment. I remember seeing this cause I was, I saw your PR and I was like, this is a great idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Actually, I think what it is, it's, it got closed. So I wonder oh. because the, the, this is a 2016 issue that was, uh, that was invalid. I wonder if I'm gonna be able to find it. And the, the problem is all my stuff is, I don't query for open for closed issues. But um, oh, yeah. anyway, I'll post it on Twitter. And uh, if anybody wants to follow me and I'll talk about my experience in contributing to GraphQL, almost contributing to graphical uh, and finding out that the, the problem was already solved through some other P- unrelated PRs. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's good times and knowing that it's that's super valid too, knowing that there are issues that could be closed. Like that's actually a valid contribution. Uh, just literally just going into the issues and paginating to the last page and saying, Hey, is there anything that actually is sort of cr- like crusty? Like there, there is Stalebot, uh, which is great, but sometimes Stalebot mm-hmm. can be a little aggressive. Um, yeah. So instead, like, why don't you actually, I don't want, I don't want to should on anybody, which is, uh, trying to keep it family friendly, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah, like you could do whatever you want, but like my goal would be giving a contribution and learning the project. So I might even just go through some of these old issues and look at Kyle's here for a main yeah. maintainer and uh, founder of Gatsby. Um, but yeah, go through here and say, hey, is this still valid? I tried doing and this myself. We decided to make this, um, this is the one feature we decided if you see, if you see the one everyone responded to where I announce above there, um, given that, oh, yeah. Uh, this one. Given that we're doing one final. So we also, the decision to do a 1.0 was like a few weeks ago too. 
So before nice. we were calling it 2.0, or we were, this is all going to be 1.0 with plugins. Yeah. But we decided that 1.0 should just be like a stable version of the old graphical. And we, and we decided we're just going to add one feature, which is the headers tab inspired by GraphQL Playground um, to, uh, to unlock this ability to make it easier for people to authenticate. Because while you can, um, um, while, while you can um, programmatically add headers by overriding the fetcher function that yeah. you pass as a prop to the graphical component, um, it's not ideal for users who just want to pass headers on the fly and treat it as just like a kind of generic IDE. So um, yeah, because in other companies we've we generate you know you you like we've made it so you have like a login flow and then that generates the fetcher function with your credentials and every request has that, but um, but this this allowed um, this allows you to override headers on the fly by each request or and set them default headers across the board too. Yeah. So you have both both options. Um, and so that was the one feature. There's so many other features we want to give people, but this is the one that was probably most in demand by yeah. anyone. There's been people who were just like ah. F this, I'm going to use Playground. And I'm like, I don't blame you. I've been there. Yeah. I will admit, there was a company once where we were so frustrated with graphical, we switched to the Playground. Um, and now I'm a maintainer for Playground. <laughs> so, nice. Um, nice. And that's a it. whole, yeah, yeah. It, there's a whole, if people are interested, there's a whole article about that on the Graphical Foundation blog where we announce that, that the efforts are joining forces. So that there will be a build of graphical playground, or I'm sorry, of of graphical a preset, if you will, um, that enables that. Capability. Yeah, so, yeah. This this guy is great. He he added it. He hadn't worked with React before either. He was he's a Rubyist, a Rails developer. So it's very GraphQL. Uh, <laughs> he's really he just he just went went for it. So there's one little bug with it. Luckily, it's all still in alpha. This is. A graphical 1.0 alpha 11 that contains this release and then 12 we're going to patch the one one little bug with when you have the header um, that tab disabled a couple other small bugs um, that we're addressing but uh, for the most part we're pretty I, I hope to release 1.0 this weekend and finally merge the rewrite pr and so that half done redesign that you all are familiar with <laughs> yes will be in master and then excellent people can start adding on that and then i'm going to start building out rebuilding like yeah there we go the, you know building out that issue with the api proposal and stuff and well someone can yeah open a pr to yeah i am a whiz at uh left padding so i can add some left pad to this right here yeah there you go <laughs> yeah i mean we want to make that that's going to be like a vs code style like icon menu excellent um except accessibility first for everything that's the other thing is i want to do a quick uh accessibility well i already did an audit um um uh, with madeline at gatsby our, one of our accessibility experts and we came up with some things to improve on um we actually have it, it was actually one of those uh, really teachable moments um, where for a while we, we were aware that there were accessibility issues with graphical, but they kind of kept getting kicked down the road yeah. um, until the, the thing that you don't want to have happen happened where someone opened an issue on behalf of their coworker and said, hey, my coworker is blocked on working on our project because they're using a screen reader browser and they can't use graphical. Yeah. It's not usable. And so a generous user uh, within a month had created an awesome PR and addressed a lot of the issues. A few other issues have regressed a bit. And the lesson learned is, I mean, we already have a Cypress suite, which is another thing. If, if someone wants to do another um, low hanging fruit, adding to the Cypress suite would be great. Um, it's, it's tricky to do in the middle of a rewrite though, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, but, um, but we should be at, we should have Cypress acts in our, in our suite so that we can track. Oh, it's in a graphic. It's in the sub package. Oh, the package. Oh, okay. Of course. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, it required having a blank. Um, okay, empty object in the root. Yeah. Um, this way we can have a sub suite, so to speak. Yeah, um, that makes different. sense. Yeah, for yeah. different. So different in integration is where all the tests are. Yeah. So yeah. So um, uh, speaking of accessibility, I do apologize. We do have closed captioning, but I just I realize halfway through it's only capturing my voice. Uh, so I did not actually enable it for Ricky, your voice. So oh. big apologies. So if you are listening closed captioning on Twitch, you are not actually getting Ricky's voice the entire time. So I will fix that for future streams. But uh, I mean, we're all, I think I'm figuring this out as I go along. I will make sure that's yeah. fixed for the next time. Um, but also I realize we're also on time. So I, I want to give like a quick uh, round of, if anybody has questions, just feel free to drop them, drop them in. Um, I definitely look forward to, I'll be watching some PRs and some blog posts and stuff like that. And I feel like I have a good a good understanding of like the working group, uh, even just sitting in on those conversations would be super, um, I'd love to absorb some of that knowledge, just me personally as a contributor. Um, and I think I, I have a good understanding of the packages, but if anybody has is confused, like feel free to answer, ask questions or even, I think uh, it se seems like it's okay to open up a discussion of just general like, hey, I just need, I need direction and help on how to actually understand this project. Um, so that might be a good first step too as well, as well as there are good first issues, documentation things. Uh, I think questions are, I correct me if I'm wrong, questions, Ricky, would be even great to even start if you just want to contribute. Yeah. I did yeah, notice that Yeah, if you have the... any questions, there's no dumb questions. Like, they're all good questions. Yeah, the Discord is a great place to ask questions. Um, um, I'm I'm always there. I respond too quickly, probably. <laughs> like, like, hey, shouldn't you be like going to sleep? It's one a.m. in New York time zone, and I'm not going to sleep or whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's getting better, uh, but um, yes, I I respond very quickly on Discord, uh, and I um, can usually help people get started. I can't always, you know walk people through a lot of things step by step that way office hours are good if you have more involved um questions um yeah um but for the most part um yeah discord is good and then also the discussions if you have an idea if you're trying yeah. to implement graphical uh, a lot of people end up contributing when they start implementing it and they yeah. realize that they want things from graphical that doesn't have or they're not sure how so creating a discussion here. So here's a great example. The, the discussion, the interface for a graphical plugin, that was a pinned issue. That's the plugin API discussion that you were kind of taught. It needs to be updated. Um, and this is like one of Orcha's early designs. There's another issue that I, that's linked to from that meta issue that's about the redesign. Yeah. Um, and so this is a really great, this, this was pinned and then I converted it to a discussion and it's not pinned, it can't be kept can't be labeled. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's discussions are a great feature, but I was like, Ooh, but you can uh, bump the discussion. Yeah. So yeah, if this is should. an important discussion for people to have, uh, you'd actually bump it. Uh, I think we're feel like this is beta. So if you or anybody else could actually just click that link, you can give feedback directly about this uh, feature, uh, which is also super helpful. Um, so we can figure out how to do this. Yeah. And uh, so, Poochie, yeah. Poochie, Poochie, <laughs> I love that name, uh, says it's plus one to the Discord. It's uh, actually really fun. Okay, yeah. This, are you saying in general or our Discord? Uh, <laughs> I'm just, That's... I'm fishing real deep for compliments here. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, after the snafu of the uh, UI, U, the UI right. props, which honestly, like, it, it's I, it's appeasing. Like, I like the, the subtle pink, um, but I see, I see the... Um, what do you call it? The potential. I guess that's what you say to your, your kids when they're they're trying. Oh, to hey, Christine, what's up? Oh, Poochie Poochie's Christine. <laughs> yeah, our Discord. Yes, yes, that's right. Christine has been doing a ton of work on the redesign PR and rewrite. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks uh, for stopping by on GitHub. Yeah. Crit. That's also a good name too. Yeah. So I love the I love the short handles. Uh, can't beat them. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to, to shift gears too as we sort of wind down. Um, I have been doing this thing, sort of the wind down the conversation of just going to GitHub.com/stars and looking What's at the last thing. That's right. 
Yeah. Uh, looking at the uh-huh. last thing, Sea Shaver. Okay. Um, looking at the last thing that people have starred. So I'm curious if uh, this is my stars. Uh, feel free to drop in the the Zoom chat, uh, whatever the last thing you starred, and we'll just talk about those projects as we wind down, and then we can sort okay. of uh, take any last last minute questions. If anybody has anything we want, want to switch gears into, but uh, I'll go first. This is um, the linguist action, so it's a GitHub action. Uh, and sorry, this is literally at random. I don't know what I, the last thing I starred. So um, <laughs> yeah, so this because I my the way I use stars, and I realize not a lot of people are actually using stars. Uh, as like a thing to save for later or whatnot, but I do. So just building awareness around this feature. Um, I love stars. Yeah. So linguist action. It's also a good metric for for maintainers and contributors to know what they're doing is uh, valuable. So I actually got was able to give the first star to this project. So I'm super proud of that. Um, also, I can sponsor too. I haven't used it yet, so I want to use it before I start sponsoring. Um, but maybe I should sponsor and then use it. Who knows? Um, but basically, this is built on top of GitHub's linguist repo. So if you're interested in how stuff like this on the right works, um, like oh. we can look at the code and identify Ruby, um, that how much Ruby is in the, the project, if there's a Docker file, like sort of the breaking up of the, the project. Uh, that's this right here, and that's how we're doing it. Um, it's a Ruby gem, mm. and someone built a wrapper that does... Oh, you created a Docker image for GitHub Linguist. Oh, interesting. Nice. Uh, Crazy Max in the chat. Uh, Crazy Max actually has a ton of awesome actions. So he is worth a, I think it's like, is it Crazy underscore Max? Uh, he's definitely worth a follow um, or a star on, on GitHub too as well. Um, but yeah, basically this is the action. It gives you that data, but as an action form. Um, so highly recommend I like it. checking it out. I actually haven't. I, I marked it because the open source project I'm working on, I want to do something very similar uh, for that project. Um, so since this is already a solved problem, I want to get that data as part of my CI. So crazy max, crazy dash max, awesome. And I'm pretty sure crazy max, I've got a star somewhere in the top. Uh, looks like I don't have one. I might've started it last week, but yeah, you had an action as well around the GitHub status as well. Actually, so YG, who is uh who's been helping me out a lot of my projects? He built something in inspiration of one of one of your uh, your projects. So uh, Crazy Max has dropped in his Docker linguist thing, uh, but Crazy Max also dropped a uh, a link on Twitter around this GitHub action to tell you GitHub status. So YG actually built another a CLI plugin to do exactly the same thing, but in CLI form, uh, just checking the status yeah. of of GitHub, and uh, so that way you can see if all things are operational. I think. Crazy Max is uh, his action came through last week. We had some downtime for actions, so knowing that your action that your action is not the problem, but perhaps something else is happening upstream uh, is super super awesome. Yeah, yeah, it looks like y'all y'all connected too as well. So that's awesome. So nice. if I stalled okay. enough, did you have a um, a anything that you've started in the last say? I guess the last star you have. Yeah, let's look at what I I'm, I was curious what my last star might have been. Oh, I've been using what? stars for forever. I just realized um, too. I could actually add. I think I could do. Is it ACO? Uh, ACAO. ACAO. It's a Portuguese for action. <laughs> oh, nice. I, I picked it a long time. I I went and I learned Portuguese in college. If there's any Brazilians or Portuguese folks here, go ahead and test me. It'll yeah, you know it's funny but... <laughs> enough that I actually did a, um, I did a workshop in Brazil, and I think that actually came up as oh, the. Nice. Uh, if you look at these, oh sorry, this is the hackathon. Oh, private information. <laughs> anyway, that's a private org, but uh, this one's a public one, and uh, I just had a Freudian. I, I've been going to the hackathon a lot, uh, but I have a workshop that I gave in, in Brazil. And we had it like translated as well, um, so we do have Brazilian, uh, a Brazilian version. I think we have the Brazilian oh, files. Nice. No, that's the actual action itself. But I say that because the word action came up. Oh, you know what? It's it's in this folder, the PTBR. Ah, so all this is Brazilian. Uh, I think the way it works with Chrome, it's gonna. Parte uno. Yeah, there yeah. we go. I wasn't sure if it would tr- live translate it on there because GitHub does have it does. Or sorry, Chrome does that for you. Uh, but yeah, this is all the Portuguese version yeah. of GitHub Action. So if you want to learn actions, sorry to derail you a bit, but you just, uh, I remember I saying it. that word when I was that, that in Brazil. But yeah, so I was I able love to bring up other your, languages on GitHub. <laughs> yeah, I was actually oh, able to see your, your action. So it looks like you got an Atlassian. 
Star. Ooh, this is actually a great one. So we're considering moving to this from Learn to Publish. So um, it allows us to um, have more like granular uh, and highly specific plan releases. So, cause right now you just kind of, you just run learn or publish and say yes or no. And it usually kind of matches up with what you want. Yeah. Um, and, um, but we run it locally and we want to run it in CI, you know, but we don't want to publish on every CI build, maybe a canary on every CI build or every, uh, every merge to master rather. Um, but we do want to be able to publish from CI only, uh, ideally. Um, now that we have GitHub Actions, it's a more secure environment. We were using yeah. uh, Travis before, and uh, Benji had some very good valid concerns about security of publishing using Travis. So, um, but with GitHub Actions, we were able. We even tested it ourselves to confirm yeah. that we, that a user couldn't expose our secrets because the NPM token is our last defense um, for, for a lot of, like if you publish from CI, just make sure you your NPM token is a secret, please, for the sake of the whole NPM community or the whole node community. <laughs> like the last thing we need is another, uh, oh, I can't even remember what that, uh, there was that one library that was pretty notorious that- Yeah, I think it was uh, left pad. That was a uh, left pad. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was alluding to your, your minus uh, no, having no left pad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Max is actually so yeah, shouting so, out a uh, code QL, which is uh, another another feature in our security lab to be able to scan ah, for vulnerabilities. Nice. So, everybody opt in your, your projects to do that scanning for us. Or for the community, it's not even for GitHub. It's for literally the open source community to share around vulnerabilities. It. Yeah, I, we have we have vulnerability alerts for Graphical. I have I actually have Dependabot configured for only secure like immediate security updates. Yeah, we used to use Dependabot for everything, and then I I love noisy. Dependabot. Yeah, a little bit noisy for me. So um, so we do uh, like big batch like dev. Um, Dev dependency updates. Yeah, our our dependencies are thankfully minimal, and so we're able to do those piecemeal as needed, and yeah. use resol use generic resolutions and and then test with the preview just to be sure. Yeah, today and is actually my dependent bot day. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do once a month. Oh, there you go. Once a month, and uh, yeah. today is that day, and I'll be I'll be actually merging some PRs later tonight. Uh, just getting stuff oh, okay. up, but I'm also I I only. I mostly merge the security ones uh, if they come up. Uh, I don't always merge all the, uh, the 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 patch releases if they're not if they don't affect yeah. me. Then I don't I don't merge right. them. Yeah, that's yeah. I I know that that feeling where you're just like, wait, does this affect me? And you just have to spend the next three minutes <laughs> to make sure it's not in production. Yeah, and we had that. We actually had uh, marked. Uh, oh yeah, I, I remember that. Itself yeah, had one, and we actually it was. Right away, you know, Dependabot had a PR for us, and that was really good to have. Um, yeah. I remember before all of that, you know, there was like once there's this big express vulnerability, and I was building it. Um, I was working on a server side rendered application. It's called mbc.com. Anyways, it <laughs> there was a big express vulnerability in production, and you know we had to go about it all manually. There was no there was no um, what what was the npm audit. There was no uh, whatever. What was the precursor to npm audit when it was a standalone? Uh, honestly, I don't remember. CLI. I remember npm yeah. audit uh, that that being a thing, but I don't remember what predated it. Yeah, it was something that got merged into npm. Like npm bought the project. Yeah. NSP. NSP. Okay. Yes. So yeah, and that was before that. We just had we just knew because there is an, a CVE, and I was subscribing to CVEs. And yeah, I have a bunch of InfoSec friends that are always like making fun of me for using Node. <laughs> and yeah. so they're always like challenging me on stuff. But um, but yeah, it's very important to check on this um, because people's, you know, companies whole schemas are there. There's data flying around that could be PII or PHI. Yeah. So any vulnerability, you know, when you, when you have a popular open source project, which is a great and wonderful and rare opportunity to have um 
like when you do it suddenly like the the blast radius is yep. incalculable you know the the impact of one bug you you can't fully know because you don't even know how people are using your code yeah because like so. if you look at this number now this is a uh, i guess a little obfuscated because you have pack sub packages so i'm not sure how well this number works when you have the the Warner the Warner system but uh like even 3873 people companies projects are depending on this package not being vulnerable so like there's a lot of trust yeah. that comes in open source and when you know that projects like yourselves are are concerned of like can your tokens be published publicly uh, cuz i don't want to use graphical and start mining bitcoin or monero or whatever it is like i i i, I lean into these people over here who are contributing and making sure, making sure that this is maintained to like the up this key. So all some good faces there. Yeah. We didn't even yeah. touch onto that too, as well, <laughs> that um, like sponsorship. I know there's a GraphQL fa foundation, uh, but it, mm -hmm. it is everybody funding the, the foundation and that's funding the projects within the, I guess the landscape. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the landscape is a good way to chart that out. We have like a main, GraphQL fun, and that goes to Yvonne for GraphQL JS mostly right now. Um, and then for like events and stuff like that. But then we also have a special fund just for graphical now. Okay. So companies are contributing to that and they've been real generous. So, um, and um, it's been great. So, um, yeah, we were able to just allocate some of those funds uh, to add another intern and, um, yeah, there's a ton of members. So if you work at a company that uses GraphQL and you think they should be a member, by all means. Or if you're a startup and you want to be, um, you know, there, there's different tiers of membership and, and price yeah. points and stuff to make it accessible. Um, and we also recently added um, the Guild, who's a wonderful open source team that contributes a lot of other great GraphQL um, ecosystem libraries and maintain some very important things like they just took over GraphQL tools um, and GraphQL code gen, all these wonderful projects. They, yeah. um, we made them an honorary member just because of their commitment. And what so, was that company? I think, uh, or that's the guild. Oh, the they're, guild. they're, they're kind of an open, they're like their own version of open collective. So they're not open collective, but they're yeah. like a GraphQL focused collective. Um, and then also props to Sean and OneGraph, who I think we're in the process of doing something similar. Um, and it's great to have all the stakeholders. Because yeah. the way I think about graphical is that um, a developer from Airbnb or Facebook, their needs are just as important as yours or anyone who's just like, hey, I have this project and I want to use graphical, whether you have a startup whether you're just learning how to use GraphQL, everyone's needs to me are just as important, you know, um, and to other maintainers. So, and not that that wasn't the case when Facebook was the maintainer, but yeah. because we're coming from GraphQL Foundation, which is a project of the Linux Foundation, we have these really like nerdily exacting open source, like free Libre open source principles to follow. And that's, not showing favoritism. That's why in our reference implementations, we we don't choose, we don't like, we'd love to maybe use Apollo for Swappy GraphQL, right? But we don't, or, or Relay, right? Yeah. I mean, we do use Relay, but we don't use the full Relay stack, right? So there's like, there's, there's different choices we make because we don't want GraphQL users to think that, oh, well, GraphQL Foundation thinks this framework's the best, so I'm going to go with it because that creates unfair um, advantages. We want every company that's building a GraphQL framework, every open source GraphQL framework, every every product that uses GraphQL to have a to be able to compete, you know, or or build together, you know, and that's what open source this is a great example of of how powerful open source can be, where companies that otherwise would be competing are contributing and funding the same work, you know, and, and building out from that. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I like to joke that, that there really is no competition in the GraphQL 
ecosystem and yeah. software world. Like it might seem that there is, but everyone's got something unique to bring to the table and we're all in it together and working together on stuff. I work with people from Apollo team, the Relay team. I work with people at Microsoft, Facebook, Airbnb. There's a couple of people on the call here. There's just, you know, I, but also just, you know, Hashira and uh, Benji has PostgreSQL and these other open source frameworks that are just as important as these big, you know, VC funded projects as well. You know, all of it is because we want people to, to keep innovating and building the next, you know, great thing. Like I, I feel the same way about graphical. I hope even after the plugin rewrite and all these cool things are happening that someone says, you know what, this kind of sucks. I think this could be better. I'm going to build from scratch a new one. I'm going to fork it and make it better. I want that. You know, I've told people that because uh, someone was disappointed that graphical playground was going to be folded into graphical um and i said well hey here's some libraries to use um here's a starting point and i'd love to see you build you know you can build using our tooling a, a great a, you know competing quote unquote product and and we'll all be in it together and you can help yeah. us build it on see it it's the rising tide tooling. raises all boats that that sort of yes up. yeah yes <laughs> yeah, That's so more more adoption in GraphQL is not gonna. There's there's no need for competition, but right now we're just trying to figure out the spec. Uh, so if you have a direction you want to see the spec go, you want to see the project go or graphical go or the playground grow, because I was a, a big fan of the playground too as well, and still a big fan. Um, yeah, me the, too. <laughs> the op, there's opportunity like a mass. So like I think if we could sum this up and just say like just get involved. Like if it, if the question happens in in graphical. Like, let's have the question there, the conversation there. If there's another project within the GraphQL ecosystem that we were just looking at, um, I think at this point, like, I think hopefully everybody feels empowered to just ask the question. Uh, we had threw out the, um, I think I already, I already lost the uh, the project, but uh, yeah. Anyway, we we had threw out the, the idea of the Discord. So if you just want to go in there and chat or have a find another place to to hang out, uh, definitely go to the Discord s server, which I'll just post that directly in the chat and then start the conversation like if you're looking to contribute um find ricky apparently he's always online so ask the questions yeah, and i'm pretty sure you yeah. can get some some mentorship into the, the the platform the project but um with yeah. that being said where I, I put up your uh your github um people where can people find you it looks like you have your email there too as well so hopefully yeah. that's okay to have that on the on that's the fine excellent oh yeah yeah, people send me emails all the time. I get I get all kinds of emails. Yeah, excellent. And then you have this. Uh, there's actually a new feature. Uh, actually, uh, just kidding. It's it's a new UI. So the new UI actually you can put your your directly your Twitter handle, uh, and I'll put my Twitter oh. as I'll put my uh, my GitHub up on the screen too as well, in case any anybody wants to reach out to me if you have any questions. Also, if you want to be on Open Source Friday, if you have a project. You don't have to be a maintainer. You can just be a contributor and just super passionate about open source. Uh, I would love to hear from you. So if you go to github.com slash uh you can see that I have my Twitter here. I don't have my email because um, I like the idea of people finding it because it is on the internet. If you hint, hint, you just go to my website, my main website, you'll find it real easily. Um, but I, I like people being able to actually discover it. Um, but yeah, that's me. Uh, this is Ricky, and this is uh, action and uh, in Portuguese, <laughs> which I could get on that one. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, definitely um, reach out. And do you have any last words before I hit stop on the stream? Also, if anybody has any last words, any questions, I'm gonna hit stop because I'm I'm starving. I miss Ooh, lunch. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for doing this. That's what I have to say. <laughs> Excellent. Great. So yeah. Anyway, this has been Open Source Friday. I'm super happy for everybody who's been in the chat. Uh, Sean's been here at Poochie Poochie. Uh, I'm just going to go by your, your Twitch handle, uh, not your GitHub <laughs> handle. Uh, Harish Pabbit. Uh, sorry for messing that up. Uh, Crazy Max. Uh, Bagurb. Yeah, a lot of regulars, uh, but I still can't pronounce your name. Uh, Nerd Super, Super User, which is an excellent handle. Uh, and a couple other folks, too. I'm just scrolling up and seeing if I missed anybody. Sla Slavier JS, also a great name. Alejandro, 
you mentioned earlier and Helmer, everybody sort of stopped by asking questions, getting us talking about wow. graphical as well. So Archie, thank you for pulling the late hours. I think it's like 3 a.m. in India time right now or later. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, it must be like 4 a.m. at this point <laughs> there. Yeah. yeah That's one it. of the most fun challenges with, with GraphQL is our contributors are pretty much every continent. Uh, if, if there's anyone out there from from the uh, – from the uh, um, uh, what Antarctica like research station, you can be our seventh and final continent <laughs> because there are people from everywhere contributing, and it's great. Yeah, Colombia, France, woo! All right, yeah. See, it's very international. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So follow us on Twitter. Follow us here on Twitch, uh, the GitHub Twitch. I do stream uh, on BWO, which is my other my my channel. Uh, where I focus on this project, which is open sourced. Um, it is still a work in progress, but contributions are welcome too. So you can see I just literally hit wow. ship on the version 0 0.13. And uh, so this is a new homepage UI, which we did not have up until today. So super proud nice. of that. Uh, and yeah, open source for the win and happy hacking. Yeah, thank you.